with a poem Ode to the West Wind by P.B. Shelley and uh, I rather try to say that uh, this poem is to be taken into account from literary device point of view as well. We know that uh, P.B. Shelley is a big name in the galaxy of romanticism and uh, we have come through his revolutionary idea in our previous discussion. You know, I want to point out at uh, this juncture that P.V. Shelley is known not only for his revolutionary idea that uh, comes through us through his poem. He is also known for his brilliant literary style that uh, he executes in his poetry. A poet is uh, not recognized as a great poet only by having a revolutionary idea as such. He is recognized as a great poet for both contains and aesthetism. So, he is just a person who is inventing his own style of reflecting on his idea. He does not follow any predecessors in his composition of poetry, nor does he has any just a recommended way of telling something. From poem to poem, he has invented his own way of expression. He has chosen literary strategy depending upon the subject that he wants to reveal. So, here he is much more influenced because he is to highlight the power and strength of west wind and because he has made west wind as an instrument of spreading his revolutionary idea. So definitely he has to Proof the strength of the west wind by comparing it through different examples. He has it chosen the metaphorical expression or simile expression to create an appeal on the mind of the reader that as West Wind is so powerful that it works on different natural forces, so it is, would be the best instrument for him to spread his message. We know that this poem has five sections or we can call it is divided into five cantons which are in Terja Rai or Terja Raima. We know that each section consists of four terceists, namely ABA, BCB, CDC, DED. So in the first third set we find first and third line are rhymed and the second, third and fourth set all set, uh, set, set also we find that the first and third rhymes are rhymed and they are finally followed by rhyming couplet EE. E. So this is what is 
the way of expression that he has kept his idea about the power of the west wind into five cantons cantos and they are written in terza rima and each section consists of four tenses and we have already elaborated about the structure of each tenses we know when we try to explain the term terza rima we can say that it is a kind of arrangement of triplet in ambic pentameter and uh, the rhyming pattern is all explained like a b a b c b c d c d e d and we can find the same pattern has been used in divine comedy as well by dante it is also a great poem a legendary poem and it has also been written into iambic pent uh, pentameter and uh, there is one more similarity between divine comedy and o to the west wind that both are prophetic that both are trying to cast the views of the writers which are to take place in future they are forecasting and they try to forecast which is to take place in future or we can say that pb shelley is hopeful that the democratic ideal will be established in society in time to come and he is also invoking west wind to give him power that he could be as strong as the west wind is to spread his idea of a revolution now coming back to the term tercest so we can say that it is a set or group of three lines rhyming together connected by an adjacent triplet or rhyming couplet now here we also find that wind has been taken as a trope or allegory for a spreading message of change so the title itself is allegorical that within the power of west wind there is a possibility of bringing out a kind of revolution so he has used west wind as a trap as a medium to let his idea spread throughout the world and this idea is of change he knows that a kind of revolution is not possible by a single person say pb shelley it is a very forceful effort which is collectively made and there should be a natural and supernatural power behind the spread of that idea and uh, we notice that we have to assemble our strength to make a change into the system because it is so deeply rooted that we cannot wipe out easily as a big tree is so deeply rooted that it could not be rooted out by a kind of bridge so we need a kind of a store which is running with the greatest speed to unroot something deep deep deeply rooted we also notice that uh, the poem has two parts 
or we have just talked that there are five sections so the first three cantons are all about the qualities of the wind because it was essential for the poet to describe the qualities of the essence uh, wind he ha- because he has used wind as a troop and allegory say if the instrument is not powerful enough we cannot rely on the instrument to make a change so we are going to make a change through the instrument so instrument is our uh, just a medium to apply our force of mind to bring out a change so genuinely he has spent three cantons to make people convince that the power of west wind is so big so great and we can rely on that draw on that instrument and uh, we can think of a kind of complete change and revolution so in the end we of uh, uh, these three cantons we find that there is an invocation oh here that poet is addressing west wind and poet is trying to catch the attention of west wind listen i am talking about you i am talking about your power so let that power be transferred to me also or you should be my power to spread my idea of revolution and the last two cantons is what the poet wants west wind to do because the poet has made that west wind his instrument and he has already sharpened his instrument to make his work do and that comes into the last two cantos we also find that uh, the first stanza starts from alliteration where consonant sound is repeated we can very much find in the phrase wild west wind here wo semi vowel is repeated in wild in west and in wind so this is the good example of alliteration that comes into the very first stanza of the poem we also know that it is not is just a wind wind it is a personified west wind that has much more power of human being as a powerful human being is able to bring a change so west wind is personified that west wind is full with all human capacity to change this world or to help the poet change this world so the poet himself has been personified as west wind we also find lips dead lips sound as ghost are all personifications and uh, in the second canto we find that uh, it is much more fluid than the first one here we also find the clouds the angels of rain are all biblical expression in a biblical way messenger they are treated as messengers to bring a message from heaven down to the earth through rain and lightning so we also find that uh, when lord krishna was born it was a certain natural change which took place that it was heavy rainfall it was thundering it was lightning and uh, it was complete darkness that a great power was born that time so 
that great power comes through the darkness to make the whole world lighten and that is what has been the life of lord krishna that he has become symbolic of removing darkness from society because he was himself born in darkness so he was born to clean up darkness of society and make this world lighten and lighten similarly here we find that there are certain messengers and those messengers are to give the idea that the walls are to change you know this is heavenly idea the idea of goodness the idea of right to common people the idea of democracy or heavenly message which have come from heaven to the world this is a great revolutionary idea that is all coming through the heaven to the earth to get realized and so poet has identify identified himself with wind oh lift me up as a wave a leaf a cloud or there is no separation or line of demarcation between the poet and the west wind they have become one and the poet has also become a powerful personality or it is all because of the shift of the power from the west wind to the poet that poet is requesting west wind to lift him as it has lifted a wave it has lifted a leaf it has lifted a cloud you know so here it is the first, fifth canto which is impersonal confession of the poet so these are all the great things that the poet has devised to use into his poem he knows that whatever he is trying to do is a very religious and biblical and as jesus christ has to sacrifice his life to reform the society and he was the son of heaven who was born simply to make people civilized make people aware of their fundamental duty and you know a person who is revol revolutionizing the society should be ready to sacrifice his life as has been the case of jesus christ mahavira buddha gandhi and so on they were not ordinary human beings they were someone who were born as sons of heaven and they have come here with certain religious duty to perform to make people direct and drive into the moral way of life and they are also to establish a moral order in society now i have uh, at the very much at uh, outset clarified that uh, just uh, uh, shelly was bound to use metaphorical expression because he has to compare definitely if he is not going to compare the power of west wind indeed to great things people cannot be convinced of the power that he tries to sow into the west wind and how can people be convinced to uh, accept that west wind is an instrument a trap so it is only possible when we establish that very kind of thing to be the greatest thing greatest powerful thing so metaphorically wind has been compared with fire air and water as these natural things are supposed to be the most powerful things that human being cannot fight against 
द पावर ऑफ दीज थिंग्स नेचुरली वी कैन से वी कैन नॉट फाइट अगेंस्ट द पावर ऑफ वेस्ट विंड इवन द ओशन कैन नॉट फाइट अगेंस्ट सो हाउ कैन वी एंड इफ समथिंग इज सो ग्रेट सो पावरफुल why should you not believe in the ability to that thing to change the order so we can say the falling on the thorns of life it is a metaphorical way for his emotional and psychological torment that he is very much in mental mess because he has seen everywhere the wrong order and wrong political practices going on so he wanted to go on through a device that could stop those sorts of practices so he was just dreaming of something sublime something marvelous but no in reality when he is looking around he find something a uh, very much rotten is taking place so it is just like falling on the thorns of life and he has been painful to see all these kind of things hence he wants to change all the torments all the psychological pains through which he is passing and let people be just uh, given some fresh idea to live a new life where there is a wisdom where there is a justice where there is a democratic right to the people now we can also talk about another figure of speech say ogji moron that the poet has used into the poem that is a kind of arrangement of two opposite words in a phrase you know deafening silence when there is a silence how can it be deafening there are two contradictory words but these two opposite and contradictory words are used to create a certain kind of effect likewise we can say in the poem tumult of wind's harmony or harmonious tumult it is paradoxical that in contradiction we find that great philosophy is lie as william wordsworth say child is the father of man in the poem when i behold is it not paradoxical it is not contradictory to say how a child could be a father definitely it is uh, just uh, the example of oppositeness of idea that two opposite ideas have been kept together to create a very very marvelous effect and to reveal a great philosophical thought so here too we find that uh, p v shelley has used of the modern in the poem that through the contradictions some positive things come out as once rajneesh told that it is very much contradictory to say that gandhi would not have been born if there would not have been british rule in india so these are two contradictory things but it is the result of the british rule that gandhi became gandhi otherwise gandhi would have been not been known to us so definitely we can say that there are two contradictory things which contribute to the birth of a marvelous idea a marvelous thought now we know just behind the writing of this poem there is a political subtext of p v shelley that he knows that literature can play a great role in cleaning up 
political bottlenecks political obstructions and it it has been rightly thought we can say when there was british rule in india there were so many great poets like tagore and so on who were writing poetry but with a definite political purpose where the mind is without fear is a fine literary piece but it has a political purpose to awake the countrymen let my countrymen awake that is a request to god father and like pv shelly he is also addressing god here he is addressing west wind to give power to the common people to change the rotten system likewise he is requesting tagore is requesting to god the father to awake his countrymen that he could be free of all sorts of psychological mess that he could lead a movement for freedom so it was just a great political purpose behind writing the poem so is here the case with pv shelly when he was writing this very poem and we can say shelly called for revolution in 1819 Uh, in his poem england in 1890 so we find that both shelly and forest will sing sweetly yes when will both sing sweetly when that political ideal is established yes tagore and nation will sing sweetly when the heaven of freedom is established so when the political ideal is established in society the poet the foreigner and the nature both start singing sweetly so pv shelly was in sadness he realized how difficult it is tagore too realized how difficult it is to get freedom from the strong british rule but he was just uh, praying to god father for awakening the common people and uh, he had hope that india will be free so here pb shelly writes that uh, there should be a hope it is an optimistic poem that forest is losing its leaves it is the symbol of losing hope but when new leaves are coming out which is possible only when the old leaves are falling then within that kind of sense of uh, loss there is a sense of gain or new birth so in the beginning it looks to be very much uh, just uh, uh, a sad feeling but ultimately the idea of hope age within that so we can say that the first stanza indicates the wind blowing the leaves of autumn the second stanza indicates the wind blowing the clouds in the sky the third stanza indicates the wind blowing across an island the waves of the sea the fourth stanza is about the persona imagining itself the leaf cloud and wave and the strength of wind he sees himself as like the wind timeless and shift and proud and finally stanza he asks the wind to play upon him like a lie to share the wind's fierce spirit and power to spread his words throughout the world for awakening so we find 
that it is a very much uh, uh, purpose. The tone of the poem is full with excitement, pleasure, joy and hope. And uh, there are so many parallelism that we can find here. Uh, th that parallel is between the seasonal cycle of the wind and that of the ever-changing spirit. We find that uh, wind, an inner change from apathy to a spiritual vitality is the purpose of the poem. And from the imaginative sterility to creative power is the hidden idea of the poem. So the speaker is aware of his own mortality and the, uh, 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 there is an awareness of immortality of the subject that he is raging. So the poet is uh, just uh, from the romantic moment and uh, he has also taken resort to classical forms. So we find that there are so many odds which have been popularly known to us. Now we can talk about the odes written by Wordsworth, imitation of immortality. John Keats himself has written another ode, ode to the Grecian Arn and so on. But this ode is a kind of classic example for just a political subtext and so on. So we can say that it is a very uh, well-designed play, uh, po poem.